Democracy and secrecy hand in hand. While transparency is a cornerstone of democracy, today's India is cultivating secrecy. Paradoxically, this culture of secrecy is sometimes justified in the name of transparency. In reference to the statement, electoral bonds are a case in point. They were introduced in February 2017 by the Centre in the name of transparency, allowing anonymous donations to political parties and therefore protected the privacy of the donors. The Election Commission of India criticised the opacity of this financial mechanism and described it as a retrograde step. The Election Commission of India told the government that this arrangement would prevent the state from ascertaining whether a political party has taken any donation in violation of the provisions under Section 29B of the Representation of the People Act, which prohibits the political parties from taking donations from government companies and foreign sources. Electoral bonds made it impossible to check whether a company was giving to parties more than what the Companies Act 2013 permitted, which is 7.5% of the net average profit of the three preceding financial years. The government has not been deterred by these legal concerns, presumably because the benefits it would derive from behind-the-curtains bargains with the corporate sector are much more attractive than the opprobrium resulting from the ECI's reprimands. Sealed envelope has become a modus operandi in several Indian institutions, including the Supreme Court of India. In the case of political funding by electoral bonds or otherwise, a three-judge bench headed by the then Chief Justice Ranjan Gogoi in 2019 directed political parties to submit the details of donations received to the ECI in sealed cover by May 30. However, this happened after the elections. The Assam administration had to show the progress it was making in the implementation of the National Register of Citizens by submitting reports in sealed covers to Justice Gogoi. However, when Justice Gogoi was accused of sexual harassment, the panel formed by the Supreme Court found no substance in the allegations on the basis of a report it had received in a sealed cover that was not disclosed even to the complainant. Commenting on these developments, Justice Madan Lokur wrote that secrecy is the name of the game. It won't be impertinent to say the craze of secrecy has affected the Right to Information Act. First, the government did not appoint a Chief Information Commissioner for a year after the incumbent retired in August 2014 and did not fill vacant Information Commissioner posts in the Central Information Commission between 2016 and 2018, a year when consequently only seven commissioners out of the sanction strength of 11 were in place. After the Supreme Court intervened, some appointments were made in January 2019, but four posts remained vacant, a clear indication of the government's lack of interest in the CIC and its attempt to weaken it. The backlog of pending appeals had reached 30,000 cases in late 2019 as the CIC has become a rather dysfunctional body. Second, the government refused to disclose information which was previously available under the RTI Act. For instance, queries about phone tapping are not responded to anymore. In the year 2016-17, the Home and Finance Ministries rejected close to 15% of the applications they received, while the RBI and public sector banks rejected 33%. The RBI, however, refused to give any information about the decision-making process that led to demonetization. 
During the 2019 monsoon session of parliament, just after the Lok Sabha election, the Modi government amended the RTI Act to limit the power of the CIC. The five-year fixed tenure for the Chief Information Commissioner and Information Commissioners was abolished. Their salaries were not fixed anymore like election commissioners. The government even diluted the Whistleblowers Protection Act. Whistleblowers can now be prosecuted for possessing the documents on which the complaint has been made. The National Statistical Commission and the Chief Statistician of India faced a credibility crisis during Modi's first term when the new GDP series was released. Similarly, the National Crime Records Bureau has been affected by delays and deletions. For instance, lynching and religious killings are no longer enumerated and the number of members of religious communities in the police forces. Information that had been introduced by the Vajpayee government is no longer listed. The National Sample Survey Organization has not been spared either. In 2019, nearly 200 scholars wrote to the government to release the 75th round survey of consumer expenditures, which had found that the percentage of citizens living below the poverty line had increased between 2011-12 and 2017-18. To get on your minds a cascade of knowledge, subscribe the channel and press the bell icon to get the latest updates.